Hello. So I have a new IBM PC. It is rather similar to my old PC 330, which was in a video not so long ago. It's very similar, in fact. It's also a PC 330, but it's a 466DX2, which I assume means a 486DX266. As you can see, it's in very good condition. I just noticed this is ah, it moves. I never realised that. I think the IBM logo was the wrong way around, but it moves. Case has its still blue bit. Slides just like the old one. It's got floppy drive, no CD. I know nothing about this machine at all. Um, picked up today off eBay. Extremely local to me. Um, let's have a quick look around the back. I've not had the lid off yet. What have we got? So, keyboard mouse, serial, serial, power, little VGA network. Oh, look, 16 slash 4. We've got a Toko Ring network card. Oh, I've got nothing to plug that into. It's a bit of a shame. Power in, 230 volts, and the fan. So there's no audio on this. Obviously no USB because it's a 486. It's a model 6571-LV1. And yeah, look, extremely clean. The only thing wrong with it, it's a couple of little nicks on the case there. Not trying to get rust there. Oh, let's just have a look inside. Inside of the case, typical for these description of the motherboard and the jumpers and memory 4 meg up to 1 to 8 meg. Yeah, oh, it's got 46SX or DX, DX2, DX4, P24T. Is that the Pentium overdrive? Anyway, let's see what we've got. Get you a bit closer. So we have a single SIM, 8 meg, it says there. Oh, it's Visa Local Bus and ISA. Oh, I honestly thought it'd be PCI. Is that a little bit disappointing? Maybe. I don't know. I haven't got any VLB cards. So anyway, so we got the here you go IBM Auto 16.4 Token Ring ISA. Then we have a floppy drive. There. There's a hard drive down there. Upside down, so I can't see what it says. Processors are down there. No fan. But it's got a golden heatsink. Let's get the um, this token ring card out and have a quick look underneath it. So this has probably been in here since since new, I guess. Now the guy said this came from a home, not an office. Now if you can show me a home that's got a token ring network, then I'll be amazed. Very clean out in here, isn't it? Spotless, very hardly a speck of dust. So we've got a Sirius Logic 5430 VGA adapter with, I'm guessing, one meg. Hopefully, it's at least one meg, not 512k. You can't upgrade it. Cache is half full, so it's probably one to 8k cache. Um, Opti chipset. God, I just thought IBM would have used Intel. I know it boots, but I don't know anything more than that. So let's plug it all in and see what it does. Right, so everything's plugged in. I've got a, it's a PS1 monitor. Shame it doesn't say IBM on it anyway. 
I have tested it, it's grotty but it does work. And on. Have you in? That's a noisy hard drive. We have 8 meg as expected. What's the chances of the battery working? Some summary we have a 486DX266 with 8 meg, Sirius Logic, 128k cache. 1.44 big floppy, 730 meg hard drive. We have a mouse. And a picture that's way off. Bias is from 1996. Blah, blah, blah. One meg video. High performance hard drive. Oh, look at that. Is it 13? No, it's not. It's not 931 either, but it's not far off. 21, uh, 52, and it is the 16th of the 9th, 2022. No. <clears throat> Nothing else really interesting. Cash is enabled. See if it boots. Starting PC DOS. Token ring. Yeah, it's not worked. I didn't bother putting a token ring card back in, to be honest. Net network errors, blah blah blah. Oh, Windows 3.1. Tomorrow never dies. Oh, it looks like I've got loads of junk on here. Brilliant. Best of entertainment pack. We have Ski Free. this what is this color scheme oh license to no one star trek good luck jim oh it's like a windows version of ej trek win trek awesome we'll be playing that Jimmy White snooker. Oh, brilliant. Things are all in the wrong place. Accessories has got uh, arcade. Main. Simple VGA. An RS2 LAN server. Wow. So I must be able to get better than just VGA. IBM tools. Oh, it's loads on here. Right, I need to back up this hard drive before I continue. Well, a fair amount I've messed about. 
you'll see creative plug and play driver configure the card creative configuration utility happy network card happy DHCP so the machine does supposedly do plug and play I've got a plug and play Vibra 16 creative Vibra 16 sound card now out of the um, Pentium IBM PC330 um, and I've got a non plug and play uh, no name network card and the network card jumpers on it were obvious from IRQ point of view they were labelled but for memory address and the other settings uh, it was not obvious so um, I've got the network card in there first set to IRQ10 um, didn't know what the draw setting was but after trial and error I eventually got the e16pkt.com driver to work with standard driver address of hex 60 IRQ10 and the IO base address of OX360 um, that was great, got that working um, no problems at all then I put the sound card in there the machine plug and played it to uh, the address was that's what it is now but it was A280 I initially I10 clash with network cards so the network stopped working uh, and then D3H7 P380 I think that's a right mess anyway messed around I found the um, the plug and play configuration utility from creative go to plug and play cards and you can set it here whatever you want and he's now very happy um, the card works alongside it so I've network and sound now working on this and just let's prove the sound sound that everyone recognizes and it starts testing go on Windows, so I now have um, standard Windows. Ta -da. So, what am I going to do with it next? Well, I backed up the hard drive. I'm going to switch the drive over to Compact Flash and then what am I going to do? I could play a bit of Ski Free a bit of IBM computer. IBM computers 
should run an IBM OS. Now technically it's running PC DOS, which is an IBM OS. I want an IBM graphical interface. I don't know if Windows rubbish. The last time I tried this, it was a complete failure. So, installation disk in. Here we go. Now my previous RS2 attempt was my first attempt at the 486 build off, which was using a slightly bizarre laptop. The laptop was on the OS2 hardware compatibility list, but after days of trying to get it working, I gave up. Called it a day, gave up on the 486 build off. Until I decided to message a guy on eBay. Oh, look at that. Um, Turn that part this down, it might look good on camera. Yes, I messaged this guy on eBay who's had this IBM 486 PC330 up on eBay for a very long time. It was a little bit too rich for me. It's made an offer. We met halfway. He lives less than a mile away from my front door. There we go. Oh, that's the furthest I've got in a long, long time, in like 20 years. <laughs> First I've got in the last week or so anyway. Right, United Kingdom, mouse works. VGA, I'll have a driver later. Cell Blaster 16. No SCSI, no printer, no PCMJ, no CD-ROM. No printer. Selections. Cell Blaster 16, device settings. 2251, 330. Cool.
Look at that. Away we go. What do you reckon? There's ski free there. What happened to the Microsoft? Um, ski free. Oh, let's change all what's in what group. That's weird. Let's have a database of like known games or something. Ski free. Look at that. Absolutely perfect. Let's work out what's up with this sound. Uh, system. So I thought I'd do a few upgrades. I have got, I'm going to try. So compact flash to IDE and then a two and a half inch IDE to three and a half inch. I want to see if that works. I use industrial ones, so hopefully that'll be alright. I have a CD-ROM drive. Um, oh, it was just been tested by whoever I bought it off eBay. It's from 2001. It's a little bit new for this. I think it's a. Oh, it's a CR589B, I think it's like a 32 speed or something. A completely blank front. That's sealed up there. It might be a bit fast, but because it's got a blank front, no one will know. It's only got 8 meg of RAM in it, and I want to see if any of the sims I've got lying around will work. So I think first of all, let's try the RAM. So that doesn't want to come out. Yeah. So I've got a feeling it might be 32 meg Sims. A bit overkill, but um, that way. Just try one for the moment. And turn it on. Any beeps? No. Looking on the screen. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen. 18, 19, 20. Wow. This makes a long boot now, doesn't it? 32 meg. It's happy with that. Oh, should I put two in? Now, looking at this. This says here. 64 meg has to be four 16s. It also says 32 has to be 16s or 8s. It doesn't say you can put in a single. It seems to like pairs. Hmm. Pairs in memory 1 and 2. It does say 128 meg with three 32s. I think 128 meg is a bit of a waste for this machine to be honest. Stick in these two. Power on again.
God, I'd have dreamed to have 64 meg in a 486 in the mid 90s. These simple are a fortune when they're new. Two will fly along. Look at that. Beautiful. In which case, I might try sticking OS2 Warp 4 on here. I put OS2 Warp 3. And then there's a different memory R. Yes, I know. So it turns out I put OS2 Warp 3 normal edition, which is obviously the one I've got in this box here with the bonus pack. And it, um, there's a different version called OS2 Warp 3 Connect, which has all the networking built into it. So I could just upgrade to try that out, or I can try going straight to OS2 Warp 4. Let's have a little play with OS2 Warp 3 though now. I spent a while installing the um, bonus pack. Now, Show you it now. Oh, I also found in the box was it? Mm. That's the end of that, isn't it? Oh, it's already a wreck. OS2 W3 MISC. It's not much on there, but there's something. Let me stick that CD drive in and have a look. Let's have a look what's on this CD then. Uh, I should now have... Oh, there's no CD drive. Do I need to install a CD drive or something? No, I don't know. You think I'd just pick it up, wouldn't you? CD ROM support, there you go. Oh, what? Non-listed IDE CD-ROM. Go for it. Oh. And the floppy disks come out again. Skip. Quick. TV. Uh, after a fair bit of messing about, um, 
there's lots of file, F line you have to add to the config.sys file, but it's all documented in that free TCP thing. Um, I can now ping Google for OS2 Warp 3. And I can also bring up a telnet line. No, I don't connect because I'm not dialing up. And I can open the session to tell you how to come. Star Wars. Oh, let's make it full screen. And there we go. The old towel dot blinking lights that I know hasn't worked for it a while, but this one still works. Look at this. Fully internet connected. So next job is to try and find some OS2 software. One thing in this case, it's got too many cables. This cable engine is really poor because it's only got one hard drive bay and one five and quarter inch bay. Here it has one, two, three, four full size Molex connectors plus a floppy connector. So a floppy drive cable that is 85 miles long. Right. 1995 dated. Oh, let's try and tidy this up a bit. Oh, also I noticed it's got a um let's see that down there. So on the Pentium that is a proper in and out latch and unlatch um power switch. This it's a soft power switch. So earlier, as it was crashing, it um I'd hit the power button, the lights would go off, the screen, no, the screen would go off, but the power light stayed on and the machine stayed running. Hit the power button again, it woke up, the screen came back exactly where it was, and the crashed trap error. So I've turned off all power management to this next, like a proper power button now. Right, back a sec. So as this video is getting on a bit now, a good half hour or so, um, I'm going to call it a day on this part I'm doing into the second part um, on this PC um, you can see I've built it I have done a couple of upgrades since recording it I've changed a few bits again um, I have gone down the OS to warp 4 road um, so I will do another video where I show OS to warp 4 and I'll go through the boot manager setup um, how I'm dual booting with DOS 622 and Windows 311. Um, I'd grief for the sound as you saw, so I've changed that. So look forward to a second part quite soon. Cheerio, thanks for watching.